Tell your thanks, hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How is everyone doing? I hope all is well. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. His name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So, guys, I got a word and I'm going to go into the word of God right now. Hallelujah. So, we're going to read from three different books and today we're going to read from... We're going to read from, um, we, we're going to read from Matthew, Jeremiah, and Exodus. And I'm going to begin to read in your hearing. Hallelujah. Matthew 10, verse 19 and 20. And these words says, But when they deliver up, deliver you up, take no thought how or what he shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what he shall speak. Verse 20, for it is not he that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Jeremiah 1, verse 6, 7, and 9. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Let us go to Exodus. Let us go to Exodus 4, verse 10 through 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither therefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Verse 11, And the Lord said unto him, Who had made man's mouth, or who make it the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have I not I the Lord? Verse 12 and last. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. I honor it by saying, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So even now, mighty God, I bless your word today. I pray even now, God, that you will go before me, God, I pray, mighty God, that you will kill my flesh so your spirit can flow on the inside of me, God. Father God, let this word be a blessing to your people. My God, I decree and I declare even now in this atmosphere, God, that you will shift it, God. I pray even now, God, that your people will receive this word in their spirit and it will bring transformation to their lives. It will bring empowerment, God, to their lives. Give your people deep deep insight to give your people revelation. Father God, I pray, mighty God, that every mind-binding demon that will come, Father God, to mess with your people, mind for them not to receive this word. Right now, Holy Spirit, I thank authority over that mind-binding demon now and I clear the minds of your people. Father God, we bind up the spirit of sabotage that will try to sabotage your word, try to enter your word in the name of Jesus. Father God, I give you the honor and I give you the praise. I give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, do what no man can do in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Father God, now sit upon me, God. Let this word go forth with power, with clarity and understanding in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So people of God, here we are on a topic. God will speak for you. Hallelujah. And all you have to do is to just allow God to speak for you. I want somebody to understand and today that we serve a God and we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. That knows how to speak for us and to speak through us. And from these three books that we have just read from people of God, what I get to understand that one of the world that had a lot of emphasis and it was the word speak. Hallelujah. And I want you to 
understand people of God when you look at that word speak it define to utter words or articulate sound with the ordinary voice and i want somebody to understand that we as a vessel of god hallelujah god use our mouth to speak his word without no preacher god cannot speak to us without no preacher the people cannot hear God's voice without a preacher. The God cannot, the people cannot hear God's words. So God has to use a human being, a servant, a vessel to speak through that vessel, to speak through that servant. And in order for him to do that, uh, he has to live on the inside of you. So I want to tell you about the Holy Spirit spirit without the holy spirit saints of god we cannot speak what god wants us to speak without obeying what the holy spirit is saying we cannot speak what god wants us to speak and i want somebody to understand them this afternoon that god will speak for you if you allow him to and i believe that god wants to speak through somebody god wants to use your mouth as a mouthpiece what I'm hearing in my spirit saints of God God has to use his prophets for his mouthpiece when you are called as God's prophet God use your mouth as his mouthpiece he use your mouth to deliver his message anytime God wants to deliver a message he just go to his prophets and he give his prophets his words to speak so I want want you to understand people of God some of these prophets may be called and qualify because what I want you to understand when God wants to speak through a prophet he got to make sure that he assign and he got to call the right prophet so Jeremiah was one of them that God called to speak his word but in Jeremiah's mind in Jeremiah's thought he felt like he was unqualified and here from the Bible that we just read the Bible here said in Jeremiah 1 verse 6 then said I unto the Lord God I cannot speak for I am a child people of God I want you to understand it is not you who is going to speak it is the spirit of God that is going to speak to you but the Lord said unto Jeremiah Say not I am a child for thou shall go to her that I shall send thee and whatever I command thee thou shall speak the Lord put forth his hand and touched Jeremiah mouth and the Bible said the Lord said unto him behold I have put my words in thy mouth what I want you to understand it is God that is going to speak through you and I believe that God wants to speak through somebody but you don't realize that God wants to speak through you. I want you to understand people of God that God he really wants to speak through you. He really wants to speak for you. He wants to use your mouth to speak. He wants to use your mouth as a voice of instrument to this earth realm. He wants to use your mouth as a prophetic voice and I want somebody to understand that God is calling some through remnant in this season so we can use you to speak through you who am I speaking to I want you to understand saints of God that God wants to speak through you who am I talking to I believe that God is speaking to somebody already somebody that God wants to speak through but you are underestimating yourself but I come to tell you something when the Lord called Jeremiah. Jeremiah said uh, that I am a child, I cannot speak. Uh, and the Lord said to Jeremiah, Mamna, don't say you are a 
child, but I kind of understand Jeremiah's situation. Jeremiah knew that um, he had to speak God's word, uh, and what Jeremiah didn't understand, uh, it was God going to put his word in his mouth. Um, uh, it wasn't just Jeremiah's word. Um, uh, what I want you to understand uh, when you avail yourself um, and when you trust God to speak through you, he will speak through you. And God is calling a generation in this season because he wants to speak through them. God is calling back the church at this place where when we hear God's voice, we speak thus says the Lord, not of man wisdom, but God is calling back the church to this place. When you hear God's voice, you speak what God says. You don't think about what you are going to say, but you align yourself with the Holy Ghost to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying uh, so you can speak what the Holy Ghost has to say. So people of God in order for God to speak to you in order for God to speak for you, uh, you gotta understand the voice of God uh, and this is the most important thing uh, about understanding God's voice uh, because how to understand God's voice um, you have to have a relationship with God. Let me tell you something, people of God. When you really want to know and understand God's voice, you have to have a relationship with God. And how do you have a relationship with God? You got to spend a lot of time in the presence of God. So the more time you are spending in the presence of the Lord, it is the more you get to know his voice. It is the more you get to understand his voice. So now when you know his voice and understand his voice, when he speak to you, you will know what to say, whatever he wants to say in that hour, in that time. Hallelujah. Somebody give God the glory and give him the praise. God will speak for you. Hallelujah. I want you to understand, man, that God will speak for you. When, when we look at Moses, people of God, Moses was one that was called. When, when we look at the book of Exodus chapter 3, and chapter 4, it really speak about the calling of Moses. Oh God called Moses. Moses was leading his father-in-law Jethro Flock at the backside and the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire and that's where the Lord called him. The Lord told him to take thy shoes off thy feet because the ground that Moses was standing on his holy ground. So what I'm perceiving in my spirit, in our order for God to speak through you. You have to have a manner of holiness. Holiness has to be a lifestyle because God is not going to speak through a messed up vessel. God is not going to speak for a messed up vessel. And what I want you to understand, people of God, when you are living a holy lifestyle, it allows you to hear the voice of God. And I believe and today that somebody has been living an holy lifestyle. What God is doing, he's cleaning you up. He's purging you up. He's like he's ringing you out. He, he, he's ringing something out of you. And I believe that somebody is going through a season right now. You don't understand what you're going through, but God is preparing you because he's getting ready to use your mouth as a mouthpiece. He's getting ready to use your voice. Hodabashandai and this earth rends. You are at a place of 
consecration. God has been consecrating you. That's what he told Jeremiah. He said to Jeremiah, before thou comest out of that mother womb, I consecrate thee. When you look at that word consecration, it means set apart. Before God can use you, he has to set you apart. He has to take you at a place of isolation so you can understand him. That's why when you call as a prophet, a prophet doesn't have a lot of friends. Your best friend should be God when you call as a prophet. Can I say this again, saints of God? Your best friend should be God when you are a prophet because when you are a prophet, you cannot be friends with everybody. You cannot be so common that you and everyone is friend. Jesus should be a best friend. God should be a best friend because you are hired by God. You are working for God. So anytime he gives you a word and he tells you to go do something, you got to go do it. And sometimes when God he sets you apart, when he sets you apart, he sets you apart to, to take you away from all the destruction, all the destruction of this world. That's when God, he, he sets you apart. Sometimes God has to, to set you apart and he has to put you at a place of isolation where your focus can be on him. And what I'm hearing in my spirit, when you are really called and chosen as a prophet, God will make provision for you. God will will allow God will God will allow people to bless you. He he, he will make sure Mandaba Sunday that all your needs are being supplied. Everything that you want from God, he will make sure that all your needs are supplied. All your bills are paid because a true prophet has to seek God. When you have been called as a prophet, you got to be seeking God's face. You cannot be a prophet and you are all over the place. You have to be stabilized in the presence of God. And that's why the Bible said uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So what uh, this is saying, uh, when you are unstable, uh, God cannot get to you. Uh, so in order for him to make you stable, he had to put you at a place of isolation. And I believe that God has put somebody at a place of isolation. You don't understand uh, why you are by yourself. Uh, but I want to impart in your spirit, man, that you didn't call to be around everyone. That's how God made you. He made you to be by yourself because how he wants to use you. Mm. I'm hearing something in my spirit. He know the reason why he called Jeremiah. He said to Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, listen to this, he said to Jeremiah, I knew thee, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, before I formed thee in your mother belly, he said to Jeremiah, I knew thee, just listen to God speaking to Jeremiah, and he says, before thou comest out of thy mother womb, he said, I sanctify thee, and then he said, I ordain thee, a prophet to the nation. So, so let us put a lot of emphasis on the word before. You can just imagine this was before Jeremiah was formed in his mother belly. God said to him, I knew you. 
So in other words, if God knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb, that tells me that God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your future. He knows the type of person you would have been. And what I want somebody to understand that you, you got to come back in the right image of God. Sometimes we are trying to fit in in the world and God does not call us to fit in in the world. Sometimes, yes, we are in the world, but we are not a part of the world. Sometimes the reason why you are coming under so much attacks, why things are going wrong in your life, nothing are going right in your life because you're trying to fit in something that God did not give you. Holy Spirit, help me up in this place. You are trying to fit yourself in something that God did not build for you. I want you to understand that God build a uh, God build a unique and uh, our God build a custom and a unique mantle for you to put on. What about Shanda? I said God has built in heaven a unique and custom mantle for you to wear. Oh Shanda Basanda. It has your name on it. It has your size on it and God is saying right now that I'm trying to give you your custom made mantle that I have made in heaven. I want you to wear it. You try to put somebody else's mantle on but I want you to understand that you have to wear your own mantle and that's why people of God when David was going down to take on Goliath, we get to understand saints of God that Saul put on his armor on David but when David felt the armor David said I have not proven this because you gotta understand when God has made you a custom made mantle in heaven he will allow you to go through the process and it's the process that's going to take you to that custom made mantle. You see the thing about it, when you have been through the process, you know what your mantle feel like. And I believe that God is taking somebody through their process and you're trying to wear somebody else's mantle. God has given you a uniqueness about yourself and you got to understand that uniqueness that God has given you you have your own unique style. You don't have to try to be like Noel Jones. You don't have to try here to be like T.D. Jakes. I want you to be yourself, God says, because I have made you a custom-made mantle in heaven. And he wants to drop the mantle on you so you can wear the mantle. Because when you are wearing your own mantle, you are untouchable. So what the devil is trying to do, he's trying to shift you for the mantle doesn't drop on you. But in order to get the mantles fall upon you, in order how to get that mantle from heaven drop on you, God, he has to separate you. He has to set you apart. The Holy Ghost will speak through you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. So now, when he has you at this set-apart place of isolation, you know he begins to teach you. It is the Holy Spirit that is going to teach you. Yes, it is the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is teaching you, it is a different teaching from man's teaching. Because I want you to understand, when there is something unique about you, it is God himself that's going to teach you. 
when God, I am, I, let me stay right here. I am hearing this in my spirit. When God has a custom made mantle from heaven for you, he has to take you to a place of isolation where he can teach you about the mantle. He can tell you about the mantle. You see, there are some secret things that only you and God has to know about the mantle. Oh God Almighty. Nobody else can know nothing about this mantle. So in order for him to reveal himself to you, he has to reveal himself through revelation. So when he begins to reveal himself to you through revelation, you have to now have revelatory knowledge to understand because God only can reveal himself through revelation. Mighty God Almighty. I say God only can reveal himself to you through revelation. And sometimes you see, not sometimes, all the times, revelation comes from the Spirit of God in order how to interpret or understand revelation that was sent, that was downloaded from heaven. You gotta be in the Spirit. Oh, Shaturi Bianda. But I'm hearing the Lord is saying that I'm calling you at this place of isolation so I can give you all the information concerning this custom made mantle concerning this unique anointing so I'm hearing two words in my spirit uh, custom made mantle from heaven and I'm hearing unique anointing let me tell you something people of God when God has made a custom made mantle from heaven and when God has given you a unique anointing. He has to set you apart and put you at a place of isolation so he can teach you about the custom made mantle so he can teach you about the unique anointing because only the Holy Spirit can teach you about his custom made mantle. Only the Holy Spirit alone can teach you about this unique anointing no man will never understand this unique anointing because it does not come from man. It comes from God. Some of us, we don't know what we are carrying. You don't know that your anointing is unique and God has set you apart. You don't know that God has made a custom made mantle for you. Hold up a shandai. Ooh, I'm feeling something here. So, so people of God, so now he has you at this place. Somebody right now, he has you at this place of isolation. You are right at this place of isolation. What he's saying, he's saying that I have made a custom made mantle from heaven for you. And he says, he has given you a unique anointing. So now, in order to fulfill this purpose, in order, hodabashanda, hodabashanda, in order for you to wear this thing, in order for this thing to drop on you, ah, oh God Almighty, listen, I, I am hearing something in my spirit. You see the thing about it, God had made a custom made mantle for Joseph. Mm. You see, I said, God had made a custom made mantle for Joseph. God had given Joseph a unique anointing. So the thing about it, uh, when the thing dropped on Joseph, when the custom made mantle dropped on Joseph, uh, the devil couldn't get rid of him because the mantle was already dropped. You see the problem with his bridging, the Bible says in Genesis 
Genesis 37 that when Joseph Bridgen saw that their father made Joseph a coat of many color and that is a symbol of God's mantle that was custom made for Joseph but what is Bridgen didn't understand that thing did already drop on Joseph when the mantle has been dropped on you no devil cannot take it away from you because the mantle comes with a unique anointing and what God is saying in my spirit the reason why they couldn't kill Joseph because I have already dropped the mantle on him the mantle was already being dropped on Joseph so when the mantle was dropped on Joseph the mantle came with a unique anointing I am seeing in the spirit that God wants to drop this custom made mantle on you for you to wear I am hearing God the same prophet the reason why they cannot destroy your ministry is because the custom made mantle was already dropped on you and when the custom made mantle has been dropped on you it comes with a unique anointing and it doesn't matter what you go through it doesn't matter what you are going through I want you to understand that the devil couldn't kill you because this custom made mantle that I'm talking about it comes with grace and favor mm. so everywhere you go grace and favor locates you everywhere you go grace and favor locates you everywhere that's why everywhere joseph go everywhere joseph go everywhere joseph been Ah, we see the grace and favor because even though he was stripped from his coat of many color, what they didn't understand that he still have the anointing. You see what I'm hearing in my spirit? That man can strip you from your coat, but they cannot strip you from your anointing. I said, man can try to strip you from your coat, but they cannot strip you from your anointing because your anointing is unique. When heaven dropped the bomb, when the heaven opened up, you see that thing drop on you. And that's why when Jesus baptized at Jordan River by John the Baptist, we realized people of God, when Jesus went down in the water and when Jesus went down in the water and when Jesus came back up we get to understand saints of God that when Jesus came back up uh, the Bible here says saints of God that the heaven open up uh, the reason why the heaven open up uh, because you gotta understand uh, when you have a unique anointing you know how to make the heaven open up uh, and I believe that God has put a unique anointing that's why every time the hell come after you the heaven open up and dear a voice come and say this is my only begotten son this is my servant you cannot touch him you know when God speak for you no devil can touch you and I come to tell somebody that God wants to speak for you God wants to speak for you. I'm, I'm getting ready to close. God wants to speak for you. Shatura Basanda. I said, God will speak for you. He will speak for you. He will speak for you. Shatura Basanda. Who God is speaking to. I am right at this place now. Hura Basanda Rabasanda. I am so. I am so like shock right now because I'm feeling something I'm feeling this custom made mantle and I'm feeling this unique anointing and God wants to put this thing on you who is speaking to he wants to put this thing on you he, he wants to, to put this thing on you but in 
harder for him to put this thing on you. You have to have an encounter with him. And an, and an encounter from God comes with an angelic appearance. So now, God had made Moses a custom made mantle from heaven and he had given Moses a unique anointing. And in order for him to put this thing on Moses, he waited until Moses led his father-in-law sheep at the boxer. He waited until Moses was at a place of isolation. Then Moses got the encounter from God where an angel appeared in the flame of fire. The Bible said, people of God, uh, that the bush was burnt, but it wasn't consumed. God wants to get Moses' attention. So the Bible says in Exodus 3, when Moses turned to see this great sign, when Moses turned, when Moses turned to see this great thing, uh, God Almighty, Moses was shocked. Uh, he was shocked when he turned to see this great sight, man. Moses was saying, why the bush don't burn? Because he had a shot. What I'm hearing in my spirit, he felt the heat and he know it was something has to do with fire. So now when he turned aside to see this great sight, why this thing didn't burn, what I want you to understand, it is God wants to visit you. It is him want to get your attention. Who am I speaking to? I feel the Holy Spirit. God wants to get your attention. What you are going through, my brother, what you are going through my sister it is God wants to get your attention it is God wants to get you he's taking you through some things he's purging you he's washing you he's taking you through a process and I'm hearing the Lord is saying I want you to trust the process he's taking you through a season a season that is going to bring greatness I feel the Holy Spirit. So now, so now, uh, when Moses turned um, uh, to see this great thing, Adabashanda, Adabashanda, uh, and when the Lord saw that he turned, um, when the Lord saw that he had gotten uh, Moses' attention, uh, now this was the calling uh, to put this unique uh, anointing on him, uh, to put this custom-made mantle on him, uh, so when God uh, get Moses' attention, uh, God call unto him uh, out of the midst of the bush, uh, and he said to Moses, Hodabashandai, uh, he called Moses' name twice. <clears throat> he said, Moses, Moses, Hodabashandai. So what I'm hearing in my spirit, uh, that God had to take Moses uh, at a place of isolation, Moses Moses was praying. He was in the presence of God. So when God came to him, he knew God's voice. And Moses answered and said, Here am I. Marco Toribiasi. Mm. He said to somebody, He's calling somebody now. He wants to put this custom made mantle that come with this unique anointing. This unique anointing want to drop on you. This thing want to fall on you. This thing want to break some shackles. I feel the glory of God on me. I feel his glory all over me. So Moses answer what I'm hearing again in my spirit. You got to know when to answer the call. Everything is alive line up with this custom made heavenly mantle and this unique anointing everything 
everything is lined up. You got to know the voice of God when God speaks. And I want you to understand that Moses knew the voice of God. He heard a voice and did not see nobody. Oh, many of us would have heard some type of voice and we would have perceived it with our sensual perception and think it is a ghost. But I come to tell you something, man. It wasn't a ghost. It was Jesus. So when Jesus appeared to his disciple on the sea, the Bible said that Jesus was walking on the water and his disciple thought it was a ghost. But when Jesus said, it is me, Lord, Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. But while Peter was walking, the Bible said, there was a storm that came with a boisterous wind. And when Peter took his eyes of Jesus, he was going to sink. But let me come back here. Moses did not take his eyes of Jesus. I said, he did not take his eyes off Jesus. His eyes was on Jesus. His ears was on Jesus. But the only problem that he had, he had a problem with his mouth. Because he was slow in speech. I'm hearing something in my spirit. Moses did not have a problem with hearing God. He did not have a problem with seeing God. With, with seeing the things of God. He, he didn't have a problem. He didn't have a problem. The only problem that he had was to speak. And it's like he couldn't speak. He could have speak. But he had a problem speaking. He had a problem speaking. He said unto God, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither therefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But he said, but I am slow of speech. And I'm slow of tongue. I come to tell you something. The things that you think you are slow of. That's the thing that the Holy Ghost is fastening. You got to understand that the Holy Ghost is quicken. Hold up a shandai. You're probably slow in your educational status. You're probably slow, but I come to tell you something. God made you to slow because he knew that what he's going to give you is going to align with the Holy Spirit. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? You're probably slow in speech and slow in tongue. But you have a mouth Moses has a mouth, but his problem was, he says, I was slow in speech and slow in tongue. So now, God is saying, man, our oh God Almighty, me don't make you a mouth, me don't make you tongue. So now God said unto him, man, who had made man's mouth, or who made the dumb, near God say, who made the deaf? How the seen, how the blind, have not I the Lord? Is there anything too hard for God to do? Is there anything too hard for God to do? Now Moses and God, here in Exodus chapter 4, was having a conversation. God show him after God call him. God show him the signs and wonders that he want to be done over Egypt. God told Moses in Exodus 4, he told Moses that the rod that is in your hand 
cast it on the ground. And when Moses casted the rod on the ground, the Bible said, people of God, that the rod turned into a serpent. Then the God, then the Lord told Moses to pick up the, to pick up the serpent by tail. And when Moses held the serpent tail, the Bible said, the serpent transformed back into a rod. Hold up a shanda, a bashanda, liba And when Moses got to Moses to put his hand in his bosom, and when he put his hand in his bosom, the Bible said his hand turned leprosy snow white. And then God told him to put his hands in his bosom again. And when he did that, the Bible said that Moses' hand came normal. And God said to him, man, and it shall come to pass. If they will not believe all these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. But 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 I'm here I'm I'm here again. Even though when Moses witnessed the signs and the wonder, even when he see the miracle, he was a little bit concerned how he was going to speak. I I, I wanna I wanna tell somebody what you are concerning about. God has already have that fix, and there are some things that you are worrying about. There are some things that you are you are concerned about. You probably saying, "Oh, God is going to use me, and I'm so messed up." I am a witness. I want you to understand. I felt like that at one time. I said to myself, "Oh, God is going to use me, and I can't even speak proper English." But I get to understand. It wasn't me who was going to speak. It was God was preparing me to speak through me. And here am I this day when I begin to trust in God. When I allow him to speak through me. I didn't come with man wisdom like Apostle Paul said. But I come with the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know who am I speaking to. But God says to tell you that I will speak for you you. He says to tell you, I will speak through you. Who am I speaking to? He says to tell you that I will speak through you. You don't have to worry what you're going to say. I am the Lord is going to speak through you. So when I come in the presence of God, I don't come with excellent speech, but I come with the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't come with man wisdom like I'm in the spirit realms I am just hearing what God is saying it is God speaking to me I don't got no notes I don't know but I'm just saying what God is saying in my spirit I am hearing his voice and he's speaking to me right now I can hear his voice he's speaking to me and that's why Jesus, um, here come Jesus says to his disciple, but when they deliver you up, uh, take no thought, uh, or what shall he speak, uh, for it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. God is calling back the church at this place. We got too much protocol, protocol, messing up the move of God because sometimes God wants to move expeditiously. God wants to move speedily. Who am I speaking to when God wants to move speedily? 
protocol will mess up God move. Sometimes God just won't move like a rushing mighty wind. That's how the Holy Ghost move. When the Holy Ghost want to move, you hear like a rushing mighty wind. You hear a sound of a rushing mighty wind comes from heaven. So what this is tell me about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit quick and fast. The Holy Spirit moves fast. And I want somebody to understand that you are hearing a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And that is the Holy Spirit. So now what he's saying. Speak what you hearing. Hold up a shandai. When Holy Ghost want to speak through you. You got to take protocol out the way. When Holy Ghost want to deliver a word. You got to take protocol out the way. Because what protocol will do. Protocol will mess up. Yes, the Bible says, let everything done decently and in order. But there are some times when God wants to move. There are some times when he just wants to shift it up. So this was Jesus. This was the Holy Ghost teaching his disciples. And Jesus said unto them, hmm, take no thought. Hear what Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 19. Jesus said, Take no thought how or what he shall speak. Take no thought. In other words, don't think about what you're going to say. When you are at a place like this spiritually and you are depending on the Holy Spirit, you probably came to to deliver a message you were called to preach but you have not gotten a word from God as yet you, you have not heard nothing from heaven he's saying don't worry what you are going he's saying don't worry that's what he said don't worry what you're going to say for it shall be given. Hear this. For it shall be given. You in the same hour. What he shall speak. So what I'm getting to understand. That the Holy Ghost knows. What he's going to speak. In that hour. All he's saying. Don't think about nothing else. So when I come to speak through you. Nothing else. Don't end on me or stop me from speaking through you. Because if he didn't have a word for you, if he didn't have a word for you, hold up a shandai. Oh God. Now what I'm trying to say, if the Holy Spirit didn't have a word, he would have given you a word to go. But he did not give you a word. He hid that word from you. Sometimes Holy Ghost has to hide that word from you. He just want to give you that word on the scene. He just want to reveal himself through revelation. And it's through revelation you are speaking. So now when you're speaking through revelation, you know that everything is coming from heaven. When you're speaking from the revelatory knowledge, Hodabashanda Nadabashanda, when you're speaking from the revelatory knowledge, the revelatory knowledge, when you're speaking from this place of revelatory knowledge, you are getting revelation from heaven. You don't know what you're going to say, but you avail yourself. You are allowing God to speak his word through you. And that's what he said to Jeremiah. Don't be afraid. Because I will deliver you. He says to Jeremiah. Don't say that you are a child. For thou shall go. To her that I shall send thee. And whatsoever. I command thee. Thou shall speak. Then watch God. The Lord put forth his hand. 
and touch Jeremiah's mouth. Mm. Because you see, your mouth has to be touched. Some of us mouth need to sanctify. Some of us mouth need to touch, man. We need the word of God. Some of us don't got no word from heaven because you didn't get a touch from God. You didn't get a touch on your mouth. The Holy Ghost didn't touch your mouth and put his words in your mouth. You can know when your mouth has been touched by God and God has put his words in your your mouth because some situation, some assignment you are not worrying how you're going to fulfill the assignment, how you're going to accomplish the assignment because you're not going by yourself, you're going with the Holy Ghost and that's why when David my God when David went down to go fight Goliath David did not go with Saul Amaz, Adabashandai. David go with the Holy Ghost. There are some mission where it's just you and the Holy Ghost. Like today, it's just me and the Holy Ghost. And the four wall. Mandaba Kotora Bashandai. I say some mission you have to just go with you and the Holy Ghost. Especially when you want to take down some Goliath. And I'm hearing the Lord is saying, All you got to do is just trust me, man. You see the thing about David? David trusted the Holy Ghost. David believed in the Holy Ghost. David did not have to go with no armor. He didn't have to go with no sword. He didn't have to go with no spear. I come to tell somebody on this afternoon all you need is the Holy Ghost to speak a word in your spirit. David said to Goliath, you come at me with sword. You come at me with armor. You come at me with everything. But I come in no other name but the name of Jesus. Somebody say, 